Tatiana, hello. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, so usually we start the, the Sunday thing with sharing what went well this week, uh, kind of what, what made you happy, any wins in terms of like your, your progress, your realization about your exercise, nutrition, mindset, uh, I don't know, body awareness, all those kinds of things. And we just uh, share about one by one. And then we move to questions into any info that I got to share. So I'll start. Uh, my win this week is I am uh, enjoying giving myself time off and time to rest. So I lost probably since the beginning of January, I think I lost six pounds now, uh, mainly, hopefully mainly fat. I'm not tracking macros because that gives me um, an eating disorder that uh, some people, some people get like that. You would just become like obsessive and I have some OCD. So like I obsess about it too much. So this, this time I was like, all right, I know enough about nutrition to make it kind of intuitive. So let me just try. And if it works, then great. And if it doesn't, then I guess uh, I'll have to count which, and try to be careful not to get into the, uh, obsessing about food loophole, but so far it's been fine without tracking. I just kind of, you know, try to have smaller portions of grains and starches only around workout. Uh, less fat, like one serving of fat around the size of my thumb with most meals and has been working. I, I would say I barely do any cardio, like I walk with dog and I run maybe like twice a week, but I don't push it. I just push myself in the gym during the workouts. Like yesterday, um, my lifting buddy and I went, uh, went to the gym and we lifted, we didn't even notice how we lifted for like three hours. So it, it was just fun. There was almost nobody there. We could, rest a long time between sets and uh, recover and then go go ham again. And uh, we came back and ate a nice hearty meal. So like, I, I think I'm accepting the mindset that you just don't have to, you know, bust your balls to get to the goal. You can kind of do it comfortably too, which is new to me. So that's my Caitlin, do you want to share anything about you? Sure, well, Congrats on uh, your successes this week. Thank you. Um, I hit my nutrition goal twice, which was pretty, I guess, exciting because before I hadn't really been tracking too heavily on like the fats I was eating. Um, so being able to kind of like moderate, that was good. And I just joined like, uh, I guess this week, basically on Monday I, or like Wednesday or whatever. So, and I've done all my workouts so far. So feeling good. Uh, I try to go on a walk just to get more steps in. So yeah, just feeling good, but hoping I can kind of keep the momentum or kind of at least try to like, um, you know, see how it goes and keep with it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I've, I've been checking your progress and you've, you've been doing a good job so far, get, kind of getting used to it. Yeah, thanks. What about you, Yana? Oh, uh, I guess the new thing that I've, didn't feel dizzy this week after the workout because I did I, I started eating um before going to the gym mm -hmm. like half a banana and Friday the leg day I you know ate the whole thing so I mean it's it did help so yeah. no dizziness yeah. nothing like this as soon as I'm back from the gym I'm having my breakfast and ready to work so that was my achievement I guess of the week <laughs> no more fainting in the gym <laughs> Or almost fainting and falling asleep. Yeah, awesome. Did you work out harder because of that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I feel that like I'm working. Like, well, actually, on Friday, I thought I felt like I could have pushed a little bit harder. But I mean, no, it's good. The, the whole gen energy level is good because I'm taking those pre-workout thingies. So sometimes I'm dancing in the gym on the way out of the gym. So it's <laughs> so enough energy for you. I see. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Great. Cool. Uh, well, that is wonderful. Let me let me share my little uh, uh, optimistic presentation that I made for today. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm angry and I, I yell at y'all, but today is not the day. Today everything is nice and sweet. And, uh, and cheerful. Oh, Marina is joining. Um, okay, well, we're gonna wait for her to share her successes and then move to the to the presentation then. Oh, hey guys, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, hey, Marina, was... no problem. I was late reminding everybody that there is Zoom today, so it's also my bad a little bit. 
Oh, no, it's fine. I just, uh, I was cooking something and I didn't realize it will take so long, so. What were you cooking? Uh, like a stir fry with a bunch of veggies in there and buckwheat, so. Nice. And tofu. Quite healthy, hopefully. <laughs> it can. What's the protein in your thing? Um, so, <laughs> uh, che uh, peas, I guess. No, not so well. Uh, they actually, carbs. they have a lot of protein, but they're mainly carbs. Oh, okay, yeah, they do have carbs. I actually have tempeh somewhere in the fridge, but I thought I wouldn't have too much food. I mean, buckwheat has a lot of protein, right? No, no, it's mainly okay. carbs. It has, <laughs> it has some protein, but it's mainly carbs. All right, I'll make it up in the evening. I promise that. <laughs> okay, cool. Any wins this week? Well, so I bought a ping pong table, which is in my garage, and um, today my cardio was playing one hour of ping pong, and it's really, really nice. So I feel like it will motivate me to do my cardio. So yeah. I'm really looking forward till it gets warm outside. So I'll, I'll, I think I'll be playing a lot. <laughs> I feel like Uliana so, motivates everybody to do fun cardio. Like she shared her tennis, now you're playing ping pong. Now I even yeah. picked up the tennis thing. Yeah, I mean, tennis too, but it's just a little too cold to play tennis for me, but I love playing it too, so ping pong is just my winter awesome. solution. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Cool. All right. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's nice to hear. All right, well, if anybody else joins, we'll share the wins at the end, uh, and we got to move to the little PowerPoint. Everybody sees my screen? Thumbs up. Yep. Cool. Uh, so um, we have one more week to go on the challenge. We're ending right before Valentine's Day, the day before Valentine's Day. Um, so if you guys have any questions or desires on how to continue after that, save them. We'll talk about that uh, in a minute. But I want to leave you with this thought. We'll have one more call at the end. But I kind of want to um, conclude the, the challenge with the um, Caitlin, uh, in case you uh, didn't know. Um, we, we had like the New Year's uh, weight loss challenge, fat loss challenge that lasted six weeks. So now some of the girls are doing that. Um, you know, you're, you're just with me forever. <laughs> but uh, th this is kind of um, for the clients who are uh, leaving after the challenge. Um, I want to conclude it and let you guys know that even if you hit your weight loss goal, even if you hit your, you know, uh, building the booty, whatever, like physique goal, whatever else you were thinking. Um, the reason why a lot of people regress is because they, they focus on the goal itself. And when they reach it, they kind of like hit a wall and they're like, oh, cool, well, I'm there. What else do I do? Like keeping, it's really hard to motivate yourself kind of like, you know, exercising and eating this way and, and doing all these other things and doing cardio if you already have the goal, what else is there, right? But you can twist the philosophy on looking out on this if you focus on building a system rather than hitting a goal. Because like for me, for a type A person, like after I've competed bikini for the first time and like, you know, I went on stage, got the awards, like it was insanely hard, you know, to stay lean. Well, on top of the fact that, uh, you're pretty much like, when you're that lean, you're at like starvation mode, um, your leptin is low, the uh, hunger suppressing hormone, you're grilling the hunger, exaggerating hormone is really high. You just wanna eat. So you just like go and, and eat and binge and when, even when you're not hungry. So um, essentially if you build a system on how to maintain like an appropriate level of uh, uh, fat, but you still are happy with it and just keep progressing then then you're fine. Uh, then that's way, way better than trying to build, uh, trying to just get to the goal and then that's it. So we're going to focus on progress goals. So if you're in the gym, it's really easy. Can you lift more weight? Can you not? Can you squat more times? Can you not? Can you run faster? Can you run the same amount of miles in instead of 30 minutes, 28 minutes? What about 25 minutes, right? But if you focus on that, then the fat loss and the muscle gain kind of happens by itself. And you just focus on something else without agonizing about, oh my gosh, how do I look? There's cellulite there. 
there's this thing hanging there, there's a wrinkle here, like that, that becomes irrelevant. It just takes care of itself kind of as a side effect. You just focus on overall health and you're progressing, getting stronger, getting healthier, cool. And you're having more fun because now you can run faster. You can uh, carry all the groceries with one bag, in, I mean, in one go. Uh, so you just watch the trends as in, is the weight getting larger that you can squat? Are the reps getting um, higher? Is the scale going down if you're, to lose, if you're looking to lose weight? If, is the scale going up if you're gaining muscle? Uh, you can measure yourself, right? Is your weight getting smaller, waist getting smaller, even though the weight could go up? That actually happens to probably half of the girls that train with me. They're really surprised. The ones that sign up to lose the fat, they gain weight, but their clothes fit looser. Means you gain the muscle, you lose some fat, everything feels fits better, and maybe you need to buy new jeans because your butt is bigger now, or your shoulders, or whatever, right? Um, if you are a person who tends to like not eat and just work, or do a bunch of I don't know things about the house and hang out with kids, and then they're like, "Oh my gosh, I'm hungry! I don't know what to do. I'm gonna order takeout," or like, "Oh, I'm just gonna like eat this frozen thing." I mean, that's fine, but you can like schedule meal breaks to, you know, if you tend to work for too long and now you're starving, schedule a meal break, like halfway through your work day, you know, be it lunch or second breakfast, doesn't matter. So you're not ravenous after schedule a workout break, schedule a little stretch and break. You know, you don't have to have other people to schedule stuff with. You can schedule it for yourself as a reminder that saves my ass a lot of the times because I'm bad at not stretching. I can tell you that right now. And I'm bad at like working too long. And then I'm like, oh shit, it's already time for the gym. So I can't eat this because it's too late. So I go to the gym and I'm like really tired after that. And I come home and I mean, sure, I'll like eat my meal prep because I usually have it, but then I want to eat more candy and I want to eat, you know, some snacks while I'm cooking. So it's, it's not good. Pretend your decision-making capacity is like really low and plan for that. Um, another thing that I want to, I want to tell is whatever the plan you guys have, um, if you stick to it about 80% of the time, right? If you eat like, well, 80% of the time and like 20% is what we want, or if you work out, say you plan to do five workouts a week, you actually went to the gym four times, or you, you know, you plan however many sessions of workout and cardio and you miss like one, uh, or some, something happened, life happened. I mean, obviously if you met all of them, then maybe either you're so disciplined or it's too easy. What I'm trying to say is you're aiming at like a B minus in here. And if stuff is, if you hit all of them, then you may need to like up your goal a little bit. But if you can't, if you can hit like half of what you have planned, then, and then feel like a failure, then just don't plan as much stuff. Plan a little less plan two cardio a week and three times to go to the gym right and if you hit that most of that then you can up your goal because like my recommendations from the beginning of the challenge were i mean like with the, especially with the time for cardio were a little high maybe but it was low intensity cardio and then at the second week i gave you guys like the conversion from like activity to calories so you kind of had a choice whether you want to like eat one less cookie or do half an hour more cardio <laughs> and uh there you can pick, but regardless of what you pick, you, you got to stick to about 80% of that range. Or you can talk to me about how to move it up or down, scale it up or down. Um, rewarding yourself. A lot of people do that with food and going out. I have noticed that from before, especially like dieting for shows, if I reward myself with, with food and I'm like so looking forward to this like one cheat meal a week, then it's the most unsatisfying thing because I'm like, oh my gosh, the chocolate croissant and I found a vegan one. Ah! And I get it and I'm like, but it's just a croissant. And then I ate it and then it was gone. And it's like, really? I've been looking forward to this all week, really? Like, I don't know. Like yesterday, my treat was going food shopping to H Mart, which is like the Korean um, grocery in Cary and it's really good. And um, we got a lot of really cool things I've never been before. So like, that was my treat. So I would rather treat myself with like experiences rather than like material stuff. I mean, material stuff to me, like is, I don't know. It also, it's kind of like food. It's like you bought it and it's satisfying only in the moment, but then it's, it's gone. But the experience is with you forever. Um, so um, what, what do you guys think about this uh, mentality?
a good one, the right one, because otherwise I had the same with the meal, cheat, no, not cheat meal. When I went out with to meet my friends for, I guess, a cup of coffee. And like, I ordered something and thought it would be nice, but then I'm like, it's, it's not even, it doesn't work, not, I, not the money and not the calorie intake. So like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm totally with you on this one. It's just, it doesn't worth it. It doesn't worth it. How do you reward yourself, Marina and Caitlin? I guess I feel like if I feel like when I'm making a good progress and I can allow myself more cheap meals, but then I forget that it reverts me back to the old state. <laughs> so sometimes I need to stop myself and be like, okay, I made so much progress. I don't want it to go back to where I started. Um, but I was sweet too, so it's really hard for me to stay away from sweet, just something that makes me happy and um, something I want to do that, I don't know, like at the end of the day, just have a little moment. <laughs> you can still have sweets. There's stevia, there's monk fruit, there's a million things that are sweet that don't have calories. So make yourself a tofu pie, like I shared the recipe with you last week. Tofu pie. The cheesecake, the tofu cheesecake. Oh, the one you shared? Yeah. yeah. But it does have a lot of sugar, doesn't it? Have you watched the video? It has zero sugar, zero. But then how is it sweet? <laughs> I just said stevia, monk fruit, erythritol. Um, in Marshalls, they have like bottles of zero calorie sweeteners. They're always adding to coffee. I sent you guys a mm -hmm. link to that crap that you can buy on Amazon. Did you look at it? Buy it. It's yeah. worth it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I tried the artificial sweeteners and they just don't taste the same to me. No, they don't. Of course they don't, but they taste close enough. And if you eat it for a long enough time, then your palate adapts. Okay, so as long as my brain gets straight, like, oh, you're eating something sweet, but it's not that like extra carbs and calories in the diet, it's so kind of. Weird. I always eat sweet stuff, like always. I, I, I love sweets too, but I just make my own. I make my own protein bars. I buy protein bars with good macros. I make my own tofu puddings and pies. I and I add like fruit and stevia and um, what else? You can add sucralose, you can drink soda, diet soda. Shit, you can make like a uh, really nice uh, brownie or muffin or, or cake with diet soda. It's sweet mm -hmm. and it has your sweeteners. And yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> options. If I'm saying like, who, <laughs> who is looking will always find what they need, right? So like, if you're like, oh man, but I like sweet stuff and the <laughs> sweeteners don't, don't taste the same. Like, yeah, no, it won't taste the same. But like, if, if you really dedicate to find the solution, like it'll, I think it'll happen. I, I believe in you. <laughs> All right, I will give it a try then. Cool. I'll follow your recipe exactly the way you described. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones on the blog that like Satan muffins, like I think Allison made them. So somebody made them and they were like, yeah, they're, they're great. They're, they're pretty bomb. So I, I've tried, tried really hard at making them. That's probably one of my best recipes. So I recommend it. The shirataki uh, pad thai is pretty great. Like my tofu is pretty sweet too. I mean, I don't know. All right. Okay. Lisa has joined us. Lisa, how has your week been? Any wins and successes uh, from last week? Well, I start recording. Hello, everyone. Um, recording my uh, calories from since starting yesterday, I think. Better nice. than before. Much better than before. Awesome. So that's a good one. I do like workouts. They're simple, I think, and, um, you know, interesting. And uh, I kind of like them. <laughs> so thank you, Katya. Yes, of course. Awesome. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everything positive, you know, I'm kind of finally getting into the groove <laughs> by the yeah. end of it, it's easy which was it's good easy. anyway, you know, the reason was just to uh, kind of get myself, uh, you know, shake my old patterns and get something going. Yeah, okay, cool. 
also we were talking um you can rewatch the beginning later but uh we were talking about the patterns and systems actually so um i want to get uh get back to marina's point in terms of like you know you crave sweets but then like you reward yourself sometimes with sweets and get back to the old old habits so what i have found is if you're like just getting to the into the groove of it sometimes when you really feel like good about your kind of layout exercise and I prepped everything and I went shopping on this day and like I do it again like sometimes I was like even forcing myself to like have a treat because I did so well that week and that was like making me crave more stuff and reverted me to the old behaviors so sometimes if you just feel good enough you got into the groove you don't have to treat yourself at all if you're like yeah I'm good I mean like I don't need to treat myself because like I don't really feel like I need a break or like any you know rest or any reward this is just kind of natural and it, this feels good so if you feel good getting into the groove don't touch it don't don't fix it if it's not broken okay <laughs> I agree yes I agree cool but I'm not this good I'm not in, the, in such you know in the groove like that I'm in the groove more like uh, you know like still getting still having all my stuff you know, I'm working on my group on of, on working on the things. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Most of us are like that. We're all work in progress, right? Um, the last uh, tip I'll give you all today is um, manage your environment. And I know if you don't live alone like me, like if you live with a family, it's really hard not to have like snacks and treats and whatever all over the place. Um, but you can like ask your husband or your kids to like keep their snacks somewhere where you don't know or where you like are not used to seeing them right like have them keep the snacks in their room if they really need it i do have a lot of opinions on treating kids like a bunch of you know crackers and candy and like all of the stuff that like is not really good for them anyways um but we're not going to get into that right now um but essentially if your environment has a lot of triggers to the old behaviors, then you need to use willpower to prevent yourself from, you know, not sitting on the couch eating Netflix and eating chips. And instead of like taking a walk and calling your best friend while you're on, on, on a walk or having like an apple in the evening instead of candy. It's still sweet, but yeah, it's not the same. Um, so make it easy for yourself to succeed. Like I always have like a tray of pre-cut fruit and veggies in the fridge so when I'm hungry I can just open the fridge right and you're like you know like late at night you're like working or doing something you open the fridge and you go oh, it's in the fridge what can I snack on so my hand immediately reaches to like a slice of apple and maybe like a cucumber or something else and I put it in my mouth and it's crunchy and I finish it finish eating you know like yeah I snacked on, it, on something I ate something I have, feel sweetness in my mouth and I feel something in my belly whatever but if I'm searching for something and I need to wash and cut the apples then i'm like ah oh, but i'm tired like i want to go back to work and it takes time i'll probably close the fridge and open like some something snacky with way worse macros so it's that, that that's a bad choice right so if you make it easy to succeed and prepare for the worst times when you're gonna have zero willpower or when you had a glass of wine or when whatever happened, when you're upset, when you want to want to make stress related decisions in terms of food and exercise, then it, it becomes hard. Um, so we're going to have some meals ready for those times, preferably all the time. Um, no trash food in the house because there's only one way. One thing that can happen to the trash food is you eat it. You're not going to throw it away. You're not going to feed it to birds. You're not going to, I mean, there's one, there's one thing that can happen to it. You, if you buy it, I'm thinking like, oh, maybe I'll just have it maybe like later or, oh, I already have like a bunch of, a bunch of snacks. Like I'll just keep them for like, you know, for, for when you're going to eat it <laughs> like, or your, your housemates are going to eat it. Right. So tell them to, to put it somewhere where you're not like attracted by it. Um, we haven't really touched on alcohol that much in, in the challenge outside of the recommendation of two drinks a week. Um, for those of you who like to have a glass of wine or two every night, that can sabotage your goals really easily because first, most people make poor food decisions when they're a little tipsy. Alcohol, yes, it has calories, empty calories, carbs that, um, alcohol carbs, they actually have 
seven calories per gram, not four like other carbs. So they're a little higher in carbs per the same amount of grams. Um, they slow down your fat loss. They slow down your muscle gain. Uh, they don't quite make you hungry, but they really sabotage your willpower. They really do. Uh, for those of you who, who use THC related products, um, I guess they make you snacky as well. So do be aware if you use them that you really need to either have somebody make you not snack or have something pre-made that you can just like enjoy in the evening um, if, if it's possible at all. And then the last tip is you'll, you'll have to make a plan B and C and D, you know, not just plan A, I'm going to stick to my calories. I'm, what if you don't? What if you don't? What are you going to do next day? Eat, compensate for the, for the amount that you overate the day before and then be ravenously hungry day three? Bad idea. Really bad idea. If you overate the day before, promise yourself plan B. All right, I'm going to take this excess of calories and spread that in deficit over the next week. Does that make sense? Like if I overate um, on Monday, 600 calories, I'm going to subtract 100 calories for the rest of the six days of the week. And at the end of the week, your calories are still going to be equated. Does that make sense? And plan C, what if I don't do that next day? Or what if I on top skip my running or skip my workout? Am I going to move it to the next day? Or am I going to like be like, well, I just, I'm frustrated. Screw it. I already screwed it up. The rest of the week, I'll just, I'll just eat whatever. Who's, who's done it? Hi, can I, can I add something to that? Yeah. Like yes, yesterday, like, okay, when I have dinner and I'm already out of my calories, I'm putting it on my breakfast those calories so basically in a way like you know my dinner is already next day breakfast but next day breakfast i already know that i have to have less calories and it kind of helps me a little you know do you, do you see what i'm saying i do see what you're saying i don't know if i approve of that um i've done it before like yeah i, I don't know if i really approve of that mentality kind of because it doesn't really matter when you eat right like as long as you're you you're slightly in deficit you're going to lose weight nobody has ever broken the laws of thermodynamics but i do recommend that you eat a little less for dinner so you're a little more hungry for breakfast because it kind of it sets a little little bit of a weird dynamic of always kind of being behind on your macros does that make sense so I would rather yeah, but, you know sometimes when like you you had like for example yesterday i had a dinner in the restaurant with my girlfriend girlfriend and i already had all my calories done so you know uh, as they were uh, ordering desserts i was plugging in my uh, calories for the next morning right the, my dinner no 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 you never do that you log it on the same day you don't freaking cheat the way that oh i had dessert on monday but i'm gonna log it on tuesday no you log it when you ate it be honest with yourself well i knew that no, 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 no. Okay. But see, at, at least I, I was able, I couldn't cancel the dinner, right? Because, oh, no, I no, 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 no. I'm not saying cancel the dinner. I'm saying still eat a good hearty breakfast as if everything was correct. I would rather you subtract the, the excess, spread that over the next week, not one day, not one meal. You don't want drastic changes. Your body doesn't like eating 2,500 calories one day. Oh shit, I over ate. I'm going to subtract 1,000 calories from my next day and eat 800 calories. Really bad for fat loss. Your body doesn't like doing this. Your body likes, if it did this, then it likes doing this. You know, it does, it, if you do drastic changes, you're going to yo yo and your body's going to stress and save the fat. Yeah, so take however much you overate. Uh, no, no, no. I did not have that at all because as I was plugging my dinner, you know, I was counting all, I saw all of those calories and I just decided to go with coffee. And because I was plugging the dinner while they were ordering and picking stuff, you know, uh, it really helped me to uh, realize how much calories I am over, you know, okay. and uh, not, not to order it. So you were just aware, aware I see. So I just ordered coffee, 
Oh, got it. Enough. Okay. I, I thought you like over for dinner and then just didn't eat that much of a breakfast. I see. That's that's better. No, I plucked the dinner because it was over anyway for breakfast. Yes, maybe it's not exactly the perfect way. I understand, but it was kind of helpful psychologically. And as I was plugging it, you know, I was realizing that there was no uh, room for dessert. <laughs> and it was like really, really like in my face. Yeah. Yeah. Well, next time, log dinner for dinner. Yeah, if I would have that, if I, if I would have that, that space, but I didn't have the space. It's also really easy if you know what the place that you're going to. You can uh, look at the menu and pre-log what you think you're going to order and see how much it is. So I always recommend logging stuff before you eat it, not while you eat it. Because if like you already ordered and the food is good and you want it and then you logged it and then you're like, oh my gosh, but it's like double the carbs and triple the fats and no protein. Ah, but it's in front of me and I want it. And you're like already feeling guilty about the food that you want to eat. That's not the feeling that you want. You decide to go out, you either you have two options. Log it before, be aware of your calories, or not worry about the calories, log it after and spread the uh, how much you overate in deficit over the next week. Yeah, that's, that's an option, yeah. Cool, all right, more questions, ladies. I do have a question actually. Um, so when I'm on my fitness pal and like I enter a workout, it'll give me like more calories that like I've burned in the day that I can then eat and it'll shift my, um, sorry, my macro goals. So I yeah, I know what you're asking. So if you read the getting started guide that was in two emails in one, um, it, clearly ask you not to mess with uh like my fitness style giving you extra calories so please don't do that uh because it will essentially i count the way i calculated your macros are they already take into uh consideration how much you work out and how much you do cardio so my fitness style is essentially going to try to put you more at maintenance which is not what you want you want fat loss so if you want fat loss ignore my fitness pal giving you extra calories because you worked out. Also, uh, do not log your workouts into my fitness pal. You should log one thing and one thing only into my fitness pal is your food. You don't log your workouts into my fitness pal. You log them into Total Body Lab. You log your workouts, your cardio, you put comments, you log everything else in Total Body Lab. My fitness pal is only for food. Okay, yeah, I log it in my fitness pal because my fitness pal is connected to Total Body Lab. So I'm like, okay, two birds, one stone. Um, but I'm, I haven't gone above my uh, calorie limit. I think it's more the macros that like the, the goals move. So I can just like, I'll be aware of that and not put my, um, like my cardio and my fitness pal, I'll just put it in the app from now on. <laughs> yeah, so my fitness style is connected to Total Body Lab. You're right. However, the only thing that transfers is the food. So please do not log your workouts or your weight into my fitness pal. I do not see that data. I only see it if you log it into Total Body Lab. Okay, also, I would like to bring it to attention the, uh, the candida. I was just reading about this that stuff that we have it not just in our like um, skin but it also can be in our uh, gut and also in even in our brain and our in our blood so uh, and I kind of believe that that you know it's uh, it can uh, soak through because there's so many um, uh, capillaries in the gut that if you know we might have a, like overgrowth of uh, a fungus in our gut, which makes us craving more of the carbs and stuff. Mm, okay. What's the question? <laughs> well, I'm just kind of sharing it because sometimes when you have cravings, it's good to have that visual that, you know, it's not you exactly having those cravings, it's candidates having those cravings. Sure. <laughs> and, and, and then you have someone else to blame too, in a way, you know, so you feel less guilty somehow. 
I guess I haven't really researched the gut microflora, microflora stuff that much because most of it is bullshit. Like the candida thing and the the, the actual bacteria is craving more sugars kind of makes sense, but most of the twists that they put put on the, oh, your gut rules you, your gut runs your brain, oh my gosh, they usually market some sort of detox, some sort of bullshit fat diet, or some sort of like trying to sell your book, uh, trying to sell your course, trying to sell your cleanse, all of these things. So like what you're saying could be right, it's probably right, but do pay attention to the sources that give you that stuff, because usually they want for you to like, buy into some some weird thing that is absolutely useless the most the most healthiest thing that you need to look out for is being active enough and not being overweight in terms of like how much fat you have if you're in the normal bmi ish right if you're in the, in the green or yellow bmi zone you're probably okay the the the, the, the number one worst thing that that can like decrease your lifespan and your quality of, of life is um not being flexible enough, not doing enough cardio, so your heart doesn't really, it's not used to like optimal, and your lungs are not used to optimally performing and uh, being overweight, but like the candida thing, like, I guess it can rule your brain, but then you can plan and have your meal prep ready and have your tofu cheesecake and have other treats and trick candida. <laughs> All right, last question, guys, and I got to run. Crickets. Cool. Well, I think that's a wrap. Thank you, guys, for... No, Uliana, do you have questions? No, I just turned the camera on to, to wave goodbye. To wave goodbye. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys for um, coming today. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. I will talk to you next week. The next week is our last call together. So um, show up. Do remember that there is a, a massage uh, webinar if you and your loved one would like to learn how to do partner's massage. First one does massage to the other, then you switch, and then the other one practices. Jeff is a really good teacher. I've been seeing them probably for three plus years for massage, and they're, they're really, really good. They're local in Hillsboro, but the massages, the webinar is um, via Zoom. Uh, and you can apply whatever you spend with them to credit towards my coaching because they're my friends. So uh, yeah, hopefully that's a good Valentine's uh, gift for y'all. Awesome. I will chat with you next week then. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Kata. Bye. Talk to you next week. Bye. Thanks. Bye.